Good morning, welcome to TriStar Digging. I appreciate you joining us today. We have got an interesting little job today. And uh, for that job, I brought the 304 and the 259 to uh, pull this job off. And what we've got is a really steep driveway. This driveway was cut in uh, by another contractor and, and it served its purpose uh, to get access up to the top of the property there. But uh, the homeowner now has got his house up there and what the plan is to kind of kind of more formalize this road and get it in better shape, more usable shape, more than just construction road. And as you can tell, it is steep. And uh, so I'll get with uh, Tim here in a few minutes and see what exactly what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna put in a culvert somewhere to get water out of that ditch on the right-hand side, get it over to the left-hand side and get a majority of the water from coming down through here. But this is gonna be a challenge uh for sure gonna be a challenge let's get this equipment off the truck and uh see what we gotta do And Tim is on the hunt for some culverts. We're gonna put a 40 foot culvert in from where that water's going there. We're gonna run it across the road and uh, over this area and then I'll make a swell where the water will run out. And later he'll rip wrap that in and rip wrap that in up there. Our main problem is the water line, that rough area coming in through there, that's the water line coming through there and it goes right through there. That's really gonna restrict us on putting the culvert in, but what we've decided is to go ahead and dig through the water line for now. It's not even to have water on it. And then what he's gonna do is take that water line and come down here and go around the end of the pipe and then go back over and connect into it. Because that water line's probably 18 inches deep, we need to be below that water line, uh, 18 inches with a culvert. So this would be probably 40 inches deep in this area. So that's not really uh, a good idea to try to put that tile in that deep. If you bring it over that, it'll freeze. Yeah, and if you bring it over that, it'll freeze. So uh, if you bring it over the culvert so the really the only thing you can do is going to go around the end of it so we'll be digging through that water line probably if we can get the culvert and what we're going to do on this is i'm going to slope the road away from where that water line goes through so the water's not eating the water line out anymore and then over there on that side you'll see that dirt's banked up we'll shave that off get the water going shedding off in there and then make several water breaks up through there to get the water off the road so far and that's exactly what I'm trying to do is get the water coming down through here to stop running down the road and get over into a ditch and what I'll do is carry this ditch all the way down through there to where it's going to tie into the ditch that goes across the road or that culvert goes across the road but that's what we're shooting for and that side over there will uh, look similar to this and, and then up here will be my water break I'm gonna come back up here and uh, dig that water break a little deeper, getting that water shed off down through here that's coming down the hill. Well, Tim wasn't going long. He pulled it off and got those uh, culverts here. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't too hopeful for him, but he did it. <laughs> he pulled it off. We'll get these rolled off out of the way here and uh, get those put in here a little bit. Yeah, just anywhere in there is fine. I'll move them. Thank you. 
Okay, that should uh, take care of what we need to do there. And I've had second thoughts about that water break going off in there because I got to looking a little bit more in the woods there. That's gonna put too much water over on that person's property and it'll run down in their yard. So we're gonna have to keep that confined on this property. I've run into a little issue now and we uh, were thinking, Tim was still thinking that the water line was over here where that washed out area was because he thought that's where the ditch was cut, but it's not. I found the water line. The water line was way over here and they had it covered up and, it's, and they dug it in in this berm of dirt, which that berm of dirt come all the way over to here. But the ditch needs to be where it's at. And Tim and I have talked about it. And basically probably what's gonna have to happen is abandon that water line as it's going down through there where our ditch needs to be and move the water line over into the little more of the center part of the road where the crown is. So there's some good clay in there. He can move his water line over here and get that packed back in good. So the water will shed and come over in a ditch. Cause right now, if if I try to reshape this and cover that water line back up and pack that in as, as loose as this dirt is, that water coming down through there is just gonna eat its way over there and expose that water line. And it'll expose it all the way down through there cause there's a trench that's soft going through there. So the plan is to continue what we're doing, uh, putting the ditch down through here and abandon that water line for now and move it over. That is unfortunate that the uh, water line is there, but there's nothing we can do about it other than move it because that ditch needs to be over here. Been better off if that water line had been put in right down the center of the road, the middle part of the road. But it just seems to telephone lines, water lines, and whatever seem to always be put in the ditch line, which is a disaster for me people like me that are trying to rebuild driveways because you can't cut proper ditches. that's worse because my tracks are spinning a lot more I'm cutting them up well I'll go back up here to the top and work my way back down again because uh, that was worse on my tracks gosh this is steep As you saw there, I got that cut in now. Got that water turning coming right through there. And I'm telling you right now, when that water hits this, it's going to be humming down through here. Uh, that's just all I can do with it. I can't do anything else. We could put a culvert in up there, run it across the road, get rid of most of that water. But again, it's dumping water on the neighbor, so we can't do that. Uh, this is just, uh, just one of those roads you just do the best you can with. We are making some progress. I've moved up to about three quarters of the way up the road now. and. Uh, working on this right side ditch going down and it's going pretty good. Just getting it deep enough on the right side that I can uh, slope that water over to it. You hear that hydro? 
hydraulic pump of whining backing up this hill. Okay, so on, when you're trying to cut a ditch with a skid steer, what you first have to do, and you saw me coming in from the side like this, is you've got to build your slope into the ditch. And then once you get your slope into the ditch, you can move your machine over here and start working down. Unless you've got one of those tilt buckets for a skid steer, you cannot cut this angle down through there unless you start from the side, or at least I, that's the way I do it. Uh, so just kind of recap that. Build yourself a slope down into the ditch where you want it. And now then what I'm gonna do is, is bring the machine over here and I'll be sitting in this at an angle and then I'll be able to cut all the way down through there. Now then you can see what I'm doing. Um, right here is the natural, well I say natural, this is the way the ground was before I started. It sloped down into here where that ditch is. Now then if you can see, camera doesn't do it right, but now you can see the, the road is sloped away from that and moved over from right here over to right here, probably a good three feet, which gives the, the customer three more feet of road instead of the water cutting the ditch right down the edge of his tire tracks. So that's what I'm gonna do like that all the way down and tie it back into somewhere right in there where I'm at. Got a little more action going on on the property. Guy's putting in a septic tank. I'm gonna walk up here and see if he minds me shooting a little video of him putting that in. All right, I'm up here working and uh, what was your name again? My name's Justin. Justin, and who you're, uh, you're digging with who? Milko Excavating. That's on his hat, actually, Milko Excavating. So he's a three-man crew putting in this septic system, so he said he didn't mind if I video a little bit. I need to spend a day with y'all and learn how to put in septic tanks. How many feet of line y'all putting in? 308. 308 feet. And, uh, So as he's going there digging that out, obviously got a guy in the, in the ditch running the, the, uh, uh, the stick, and when he gets on grade, he just moves on a little bit farther. And this is the carry man. Yeah. He's, he's carrying all the pipe. And they've got three runs of it. Uh, actually, it might be four. There might be another one up there.
now i got this uh all beveled off to the side that area right there that looks like a uh, berm that's that uh water break up there on that side and i was able to clean it out good with the skid steer this one right here is a little different story i really can't get the skid steer in there at the right angles i want to so i brought the uh, 304 up here and i'm going to dig sideways and clean that out all the way up to here and reshape that a little bit so that water will cut and go down through there Got that water break cleaned out now and it's uh looking pretty good so all the water coming down through there is going to hit that first one let's walk up here and take a look at it uh that first water break and uh it's a lot better than this one down here but this one's going to catch most of the water coming off the house site but now that ditch is cleaned out all the way up through there and uh that water comes zipping down through here hit that water break and off it goes matter of fact I do need to come up here and clean out the bottom end of it that I couldn't reach with skid steer. And then uh, down there where the tripod is, you can kind of see where that second water break takes and goes off to the left there. Very important that these water breaks stay clean uh, because if they stop up with sticks, leaves, debris, whatever, and the water no longer hits that water break, you're just creating a river down the side of the road. Hopefully it hit the next water break and go out, but if it stopped up too, it ain't long before the road is in bad shape again. Okay, I spoke with the septic tank installers and they are good with me putting this in so they'll be here for, for, for a little bit longer. So what I'm gonna do is build a uh, catch area right here for the water, uh, make a pretty deep little hole here to catch water in, and then he'll rip wrap line that rip wrap. Um, and then I'm gonna use this tree really as a backstop for that little catch area. And then I'm gonna hook my culvert in there, take it across the road. Wherever 40 feet runs out at, that's where we'll bevel it out and let the water run out of it. But uh, let's get started on it.
day to got that uh, covered in now and and i'll be the first to admit and and tim uh was talking about it as well that wasn't the uh ideal stuff to put back in on that over top of that culvert but that's what we had to run what you brung and up here on this end i left it exposed and uh, left it uh an area underneath it so we can fill that in with some riprap and, and riprap around the edge of that same thing down here i left the end of it exposed he put some riprap and kind of build like a little dam up here on this top side across and fill all that riprap what i like now is uh taking the excavator and kind of cleaning that out so the water has a, a path to going out so of just pooling up right here causing the issue <laughs> Okay, got that uh, cleaned out now, so the water will take care of the rest of that and uh, wash that on out. That's looking pretty good, and I'm going up the top and uh, uh, take care of that. But on the way up, I think I'll probably just show you guys around the road on both sides. That way you can see what it looks like, and uh, that'll pretty much wrap it up. Here we go up the hill now. This is where we put the tile in. But anyway, we'll take a look at this as we go up through here. And uh, uh, you saw this morning on both sides of the road, it was just banked up and there was no ditches. And now then we've got good clean uh, uh, slope ditches on both sides of the road. Kind of got a pretty good crown on the road now. He's going to put some uh, crusher run on it. A good, a good coat of crusher run thick and uh, pack that in. And that ought to do real well. So, uh... Those two water breaks are going to be uh, a big lifesaver for this road on that side to shed, you know, a lot of that water coming off down through there. And then, uh, just as a steep road always is, there's a lot of maintenance to be done, and uh, it'll uh, it'll hold up good as long as you keep the ditches clean and, and uh, keep it graded. But that's going to end this video. I appreciate you watching, and uh, stick around for messages. Will God bless. Thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. That was probably, uh, not probably, that was the steepest driveway that I've ever worked on as far as rebuilding or building a new driveway. There's some places that I've worked that was steeper than that, clearing a power line uh, easement was one of them. That was, boy, that was a really steep job. But this road was insanely steep. Uh, the, the video and the pictures doesn't do it justice. It was, uh, it was really difficult to kind of come up with an idea how best to get that water to shed off that road. And it was really difficult, and it's real rocky too. You notice that there was a lot of rock in that dirt that was trying to move around. And up top where Tim has his house, boy, it, it's just it didn't it didn't stop. The rock was just continued there. So he basically built his house on a rock up there on top of that hill. And you know, when I finished up that video, he said I got an idea for the message on the end of this video about building your house upon a rock. And I thought, you know what, that is a great idea. And there's a passage of scripture found in Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-four that talks about a wise man who builds his house upon a rock. So we'll take a look at that and talk just a minute about it and uh, see what the Word has to say for us. In Matthew chapter 7, verse uh, 24, it talks about that building upon a rock, but previous to that, in some previous scriptures there, uh, Jesus spoke in some parables, talking about asking, seeking, knocking. If you're familiar with the Bible, you know that one. Another one talks about the narrow way. That the, the, the way, that the way to heaven, the, the way to glory is through the narrow gate and the broad gate, the broad path leads to destruction. The another one talks about that you can tell a person by the fruits of their life. And then the second, or the, or not the second one, but the last part of that, uh, Jesus is talking to people who claim to know him but never had that relationship with him. Summing all those up, summing that part up, we come to verse 24 and it says this, Therefore, talking about the previous scriptures, 
Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man. Notice there it's important that Jesus is talking about the people who hear these sayings and apply them and, 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 and do these things in, in their life. That's who Jesus is talking about here. There are people that have a peripheral knowledge or have some awareness or some understanding of what Jesus has said here. But when he talks about hearing, he's talking about hearing to the extent or to the point that is applied to a person's life. So let's read further in that. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Verse 25 says this, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. That's talking about there uh, that the house is, represents religious life. The rain represents divine judgment. Only the one built on foundation of obedience to God's word stands. Listen to that. Only the one who, whose life is built upon obedience to God's word stands. And it goes on from there. It talks about those who repent, those who reject salvation by works, and those who trust in God's grace to save them through his merciful provisions. That's what the scripture is talking about there when Jesus is talking about it's a wise man who builds his house upon a rock. Well, what is that rock? That rock is Jesus Christ. And the truth and the power of the word would teach us that if we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, building our house, our house of faith, upon the rock of Jesus Christ, then we have a firm foundation. The house cannot be destroyed. The house cannot be knocked down by the winds and the waves and the floods that come into your life. That you have security in Jesus Christ by trusting in Him. Let the world come as it may, but you have a firm foundation in Christ. I hope that you're a believer in Jesus Christ. I hope that you're trusting in Him as your Lord and Savior. Most important decision you'll ever make in your life is to come to realize who Jesus Christ is, what He did for you on the cross, and accept that for the forgiveness of your sins and have your home, as the Word would say, eternal in the heavens. So God bless you and I appreciate you watching.